All right, well, I see, I see this is the start of it. <laughs> your, whole, your whole back patio. Yeah. Yeah. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. I've overdone it. Uh, <laughs> the look in your eyes. <laughs> uh, my wife is an angel. Yes. And therefore, uh, she allows it. <laughs> okay, well that's it. So she hasn't been nipped? No. She hasn't been nipped she by that hobby. She appreciates it, but, uh, and it's interesting, in bonsai, there are many, many more men than women. Really? Um, and I asked a woman once why she thought that was, and she, she said, with sort of tongue in cheek, she said, men like to be in control. <laughs> so I got a big kick out of that. I'm gonna put a hat on. Yeah, go right ahead. I love how your little, I think your little chipping sparrows are all just kind of flitting about your your. Do you know size. what they are? Yeah, well I hear them. I'm a bird person. I started yeah. out as a wildlife artist. Really? Is yeah. that, tr that, is that brought true? me to Cornell. Oh wow! I was at the Lab of Ornithology as a oh my goodness um, as the lar uh, artist in residence. That is just oh, this might fantastic. Turn into a bird I know. I love birds. We always, we always I love... have a little birds in the episode. <laughs> uh, so, but um, then I got into other things. Went back to school for my masters. Yeah. My artistic interests, though, have turned to the bonsai. And this then, is art. Yes, it is. And and wh what? So you you brought your art from wildlife art into the art of bonsai. Correct. Okay. Yes. Well, and and how did you happen upon it? Like, what was your first? Uh, my son was in high school, and he had a buddy who was also was interested in bonsai. Yeah. And I didn't know anything about bonsai. The two boys went out into the woods and collected trees. Unbeknownst to me, I, they came back. And I saw them in the basement. I said, guys, what are you doing? And they said, we're collecting trees. We're going to do bonsai. I said, well, you didn't have any tools. How did you do it? Yeah. Well, we just pulled them out of the ground. I said, boys, you can't do that. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Uh, but a light bulb went on in my head. And I thought, I can go out in the woods. I know how to collect. Mm -hmm. I know plants. Mm -hmm. I will do And that started me. Mm. And one of these trees. Where is it? Is, where is it, where is it? <laughs> it's awful. I, I did move things around. Here, here, here. <laughs> if I'm moving too, tell me what to do, Sonder. <laughs> <Anything. laughs> I'll right. listen, I'll listen. Uh, this was one of the very first trees I collected. Wow. And I collected it because the, tree, the deer had uh, chomped, 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 chomped it. As they do. Um, over the years, which meant it was small and had a lot of leaves and all, but it had movement and interest in yes. the trunk. And that's one of the, the, the things that you really look for in bonsai, right? Is the, yes. the, is the trunk, the structure of the, the Absolutely. tree? Absolutely. Uh, again, uh, and, and people don't always remember this or mm -hmm. understand this, but this is an aesthetic approach mm -hmm. as well as horticultural. Mm -hmm. So we're combining three things. We're combining horticulture, you gotta keep it alive, mm -hmm. Uh, nature is where you get your inspiration, and art is kind of where you're going with the tree mm. and I think, for the presentation. And I think even with like Japanese gardening and also bonsai, it's like ta you said that taking inspiration from nature, but not necessarily mimicking it, mimicking it to the exact. Exact. The art comes from the human element in it. Correct. Now uh, there is there are different ways of approaching it. Some people are very Japanese-esque mm -hmm. in their approach. Um, the trees have a, have a rather specific look uh, in Japan. In China, where it originated. Right, it originated, as, it as does as did, as so did the main things. gardening. Yeah, you uh, know, the, like the main gardening of Japanese gardening had taken its inspiration also from China. I didn't know that. Yes, so it's oh, that's not, good not to only, know. Yeah, not only bonsai, but like Japanese gardening, that we, we think about the Zen gardening. Okay. It's just been, Refined. I don't. Okay. Want, I don't want to say perfected because it's just a slightly different style. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And it is different from Japan. Uh, yes. It's penjing in in Japan, bonsai in in. Uh, excuse me, penjing in China, China. and yes. bonsai. bonsai. And it's not bonsai. Yeah. That's a war cry <laughs> to the emperor. Bonsai. Correct. That is a war cry. <laughs> So what we're talking about is bonsai, yes. which simply means tree, tray, tra tree in a tray, tree in a pot. And it's is that literal. what classifies? Like, why isn't a, 
If I do a little mini ficus in a in a pot, is that can that be bonsai or is it a house plant? It's <laughs> it's a house plant unless you are manipulating it right. to a certain extent. For the structure yes. and yes. for, you know. It can get a little good, gray. The, right. the definition can get gray depending. But uh, we work and, with these quite a bit. And what, what tree is this? Is this like uh, a hornbeam? This is or? an, yeah. Yeah, it is? American okay. hornbeam. Yes, okay. Uh, which is not one of the better species to work with. It's beautiful though. <laughs> it, it's, <laughs> I, I love it. I've had it for many years. Yeah. And so the leaves are beginning to reduce in size. Mm -hmm. And uh, initially it was uh, pretty wild and it didn't look very good, but I liked it because mm -hmm. I like nature and I li I'm familiar with the environment and I wanted an American tree. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a Korean hornbeam that I've got here that have smaller leaves and are easier to work with. Mm. I'm really attracted to the root structure here though. It looks like it's uh, coming up out, is that something that you had manipulated or that you worked with or? I worked with what I, what I collected, what yes. I had. Yes. So collected trees often will have really interesting qualities that nature provided. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to a nursery and buy something, oftentimes you don't get that as much. You get straighter trunks and less interest in some of the, the rootage and, and uh, the movement of the tree. Well, I love that you actually wild collected a relatively common tree here in the forest. Mm -hmm. And um, and I actually was going to ask you this because it's not wild, but we had um, a lot of deer browse this year. And the gentleman who had lived on the land that we ended up purchasing had a lot of interesting conifers and acer palmatums, which I know are popular. Uh, bonsai tree. I, I thought I saw one maybe over oh, there. Yes, yes. And um, and I was thinking of actually it was it was almost decapitated. There's some new growth, and I was like maybe I could just take some cuttings of that. Absolutely. And then turn it into a little miniature. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you, you can, and they uh, they take very well. well. That's gorgeous. Larch. Uh, yeah. And that is American larch. I've done a fair amount of collecting this one in particular. Uh, but both, but another American larch. And this is a little grouping. Yeah, and, and I see the wires on here. Yes. So if you could talk about that and you talk about the grouping, because I know the grouping and a little, like almost like a little diorama. Yes. A minute, a, a world in miniature. <laughs> right, and so it's, it's approaching a penjing type thing. Mm -hmm. But um, these were sticks when I, when I dug them uh, out of a fan. Uh, which is similar to a bog, mm -hmm. and um, placed them very specifically so that they had aesthetic placement, mm -hmm. and then wired the branches into position because they're going to want to grow right up, right, very, very vertical. And and is the purpose to see the stem structure to that, push yes. bring them down? Also to create the illusion of age. Ah. The whole idea here is that we've got. We've got these really old trees. Well, you don't start with an old tree mm -hmm. normally, so you have to start with a young tree and create age. And you can do it. An older tree, the branches are lower. It's they begin literally to get weight. the only, we spend our life as humans trying to look young, yet <laughs> we want to age our trees in bonsai. <laughs> ain't, it, ain't it something? <laughs> ain't yep. it something? Yep, yep. <laughs> Um, you know, the other thing about aging of trees, though, is I, I would imagine that, you know, again, I I was, like, joking because I was I started to, like, I want to say they're not in pots, but, like, bonsai in the landscape because we have all these interesting, quote-unquote, dwarf varieties of conifers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they were getting really congested. Their leaves, they're mm -hmm. dying off and everything, and I was like, let's just have the branches that are going and then just clip in and they're starting to look like this in the landscape. It looks so beautiful and interesting. Okay, the Japanese yeah. do that a lot. Yeah. They'll do a landscape trees yeah. that are in the ground, but then they trim them as if they are bonsai. Yes, and that is what I'm doing and it's very exciting because it looks so interesting and I could see right through then to the landscape. Yeah. And you could see the beautiful structure of the trees and they're probably 20 or 30 years old and what I noticed is the bark you know, of the trunk probably didn't look like this when it was young, uh -huh. but now it's starting to crack and mature and age and flake, and it, it looks that much more interesting. Right, and it's not something you can really fake right. uh, to get the bark 
uh, on some of these trees. Right. Uh, this is another another one that I collected. See, and uh, that's you know that's and it's, it's got some bark. It's on got it. some bark character. Right. Yeah. I, before I move off of this one, though, I notice you have little sorrels and little uh, yes. violas. Is that a little violet on the other yes. side? Did that plant itself, or did you plant that? Those are canaries. Yes. Those are okay. my canaries. Okay, your canaries. And I thought you could relate to this very <laughs> nicely. Uh, that probably seeded itself. Yeah. But um, I allow a few, quote, weeds to grow in some of my pots. Yeah. And when they begin to wilt, I know that, uh-oh, I've pushed things a little too far. So it really does kind of help me. Yeah. Also, it's kind of nice, it's especially nice. in a grouping like this. Especially because it looks like a little forest floor. And there's yeah. a little downy woodpecker, oh my goodness. Yes, the downies, hairies, yeah. They've been just going through suet like crazy. I was gonna say the suet is like the most popular thing ever, and also, but we yeah. we discovered that we have a black bear because it took down the he or she took down the, uh, oh the suet feeder, <laughs> feeders and all the rest of my bird feeders. So oh I boy. take I take my bird feeders out every night now. So put oh. them out every morning. Oh, that's extra work. Well, you know. <laughs> As, well, you take them in as, and you put them out. Yeah, I take them in and I put them out every morning. But Yikes. as he's saying, extra work with all his like hundred bonsai yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, you haven't seen them all. You haven't seen them all. And but these are these are my my more show worthy. And and here's another one. Mm -hmm. um, and this one is like one of the prostrate kind of draping ones. And yes. that's another structure. Like what are oh, some? I'm sorry. Yeah. What are some of the structures that? They achieve, like to achieve in. Well, this would be sign. called a semi cascade. A semi cascade, yes. Semi -cascade. Exact, exactly, and yeah. There are definitions that are very specific. A full cascade has to have most of the tree below the rim of the pot, mm. would be a full cascade. I see that with like a lot of flowering varieties. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, then there's formal, um, a formal tree, which is very, very vertical and uh, very, very stylized, mm -hmm. informal, slanting. Mm -hmm. You can have windswept, you can have root over rock. Oh, I, uh, I like the root over rock ones yeah, too. Those that, are pretty that, neat. That is popular. Yeah. But this is a very old tree that was collected. I bought it from a friend who collects trees in South Dakota. And it was just, um, of course it didn't look like this when I got it. Mm -hmm. And then what I've been doing lately, I. I tend to do things a little differently than some of the bonsai artists. Mm -hmm. I like to think out of the box a mm. little bit more. Mm. So. Oh, that's not even part of the tree. I added that. That is nice. So I'm all the time looking for dead wood and yeah. things that I can, can add. Now, it's got to be done carefully mm -hmm. and done well, and I can't say that I always do. Yeah. <laughs> but that's my goal. Now, I, I want to focus on this pot here because a lot of the trays or the planters are very, very shallow. Yes. And is that help to keep the roots short as well? I mean, I'm imagining you have to prune the roots sometimes, but... Oh, a lot. Yeah. Often. Okay. So how often then would you be pruning um, but Depending roots? on the age of the tree. When we get things started and the tree's fairly young, uh, we probably do it every two to three years. Mm -hmm. Once a tree is well along, uh, like this tree over here that's mm -hmm. been in a pot now for years and years and years, five to seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, but a small pot does restrict the roots. Mm -hmm. However, when we trim, we trim the thick parts of the roots hmm. because that's just a conduit. Mm -hmm. What we're after are the hair roots. Hmm. So you cut the thick parts mm -hmm. and out from those thick roots that mm -hmm. have been cut, if everything goes well, mm -hmm. and it usually does, especially if you know the timing of the cutting, uh, you get good hair roots. Mm. So our goal is a pot full of hair roots, or really small roots that are doing all the work. Mm -hmm. That's where they take up all the nutrients in the water. Exactly, yeah. right. Keeps it healthy. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so the, the fact that it's in a small pot really does also help to keep the, the plant from growing too fast. Right. It has to grow, but we don't want it to grow quickly. We don't want long internodes, distance between leaves. We want little leaves, mm -hmm. and we want a lot of ramification. Mm -hmm. Those are our goals. Because an old tree has all those things. Right. 
And then uh, you would probably also want to trim the roots so it doesn't, I would imagine if it starts to circle the planter or something, exactly. it, could, it could girdle and, you know. They circle. not only girdle, they'll yeah. push the whole pot right up out <laughs> uh, the tree, out of the yeah. pot, literally. Yeah. It is spring, but you have lots of like new growth. Right, happening, everything's really popping now. Yeah. Which is all that? All that light green, lime the, the green. The real pale green, yeah. yes. Uh, that is a balsam fir. I'm not, I'm not telling you anything. No, here. it's great. No, I, a, a balsam I, fir. I'm getting to learn more of my conifers because we have so many interesting conifers in our landscape. Like, you know, cultivars, like, Picea pungens globosa, which I'd imagine would all these would make like good bonsais because they're they're supposed to be restricted in growth yes, anyway. Yes. You know what I mean? So uh, they can be a problem sometimes in though that they have branches just everywhere, and right. you've got to you've got to pick and choose. Yes, I'm usually in my house plants. I'm uh, conservative when I when I prune because I don't mind a little wild and wacky. But I found when I was outside in the landscape with the conifers. I was like, I can't believe I'm taking off so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like yeah. it was like having long hair and then just feeling like, oh my God, my hair is so short and it feels great and I'll never go back again. Um, so I was like pruning happy <laughs> outside. So and I and I think that I it's just because I realized how beautiful the tree could look when you give it a structure similar yes. to a bonsai. And it's interesting, people often will say, uh, I've had people say to me, well, you're torturing these trees. Mm -hmm. And my first comment then is, do you, do you have a lawn? Yes. Do you mow it? Mm -hmm. So you cut all the grass multiple times a year. Do you have any hedges? Yes. Do you trim the hedges? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they get the point. Yes, yeah. Uh, the plant, and these plants, if you think about it, from a biological standpoint, they're all designed to cope with being trimmed because mm -hmm. animals trim them all mm -hmm. the time. Insects, mm -hmm. deer, mm -hmm. you name it. You are actually probably giving this uh, American hornbeam some opportunity for growth. Yes. <laughs> Com compared to like all the deer that are out absolutely. there. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, and then uh. I noticed that some of them have these, and I don't know if it's part of the tree or if it's something that you stuck in, but no, there's- No, that's part of the tree. Yeah, so there's like some dead elements of it, but it kind of looks cool to me. I could almost see a miniature crow landing on it. <laughs> exactly. There's a story, uh, and it's a true story, about a gentleman in Germany, Walter Paul, who is a good, good bonsai artist, mm -hmm. and he had an exhibit, and there was a farmer that came and was observing the show, and ended up standing in front of a tree and stood there and stood there and stood there and stood there and looking. And Walter, I told the story, Walter came over to this, this uh, elderly uh, farmer and said, why are you standing here so long? You must really like the tree. He said, he said, I don't understand it. He said, how did you get a tree with lightning that hit the top of the tree like this? It had, it had dead wood at the top, yeah. made it look like lightning. Yeah. And he, he was taken in, it looked like a tree that had been hit by lightning. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's, so that's another one of our goals, you know? <laughs> a little bit of nature. A little bit of nature. We have a tree that looks just like that on our land, which is, and, and there's a, a, the crows sit on it all the time. Okay. Well, I want to I want to go back to some of these. I mean, th yeah. this is an incredible. I, I'm not sure what kind of pine this is, but um, it it's looks, one of my favorites. It looks incredible. That is a ponderosa pine. A ponderosa pine. Okay. And they get enormous. And the out west, the bark is amazing. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So this would be. Is this kind of a semi cascade or no? Is uh, it slanted? This, this would be a slant. Okay, slanted. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, the, the problem with this particular species is it's very hard to reduce the size of the needles. Mm. Uh, in fact, the needles were, a few years ago, even longer than this. Mm. Uh, it's a very uh, vigorous kind of tree. But this was also, this was collected, I bought this from my friend in South Dakota um, uh, years ago and have been training it. And so you started about 20 years ago. Yes. So are most of these 
20 years ish no or are they no are you, you got some that are no. a little bit older no i didn't do much buying at okay. first i did mostly collecting of my own uh trying to learn and um and I was kind of slow at learning, mm -hmm. I'll have to admit. <laughs> Tried to do too much on my own. Right. Because uh, there's there are tons of places where you can learn, and I didn't take advantage of that for mm. several years. Hmm. And once I did... Are you too proud? <laughs> um, maybe, no, you may be right. Yeah. Um, I did the same with my art yeah. as a painter. Yeah. I tried to do, I figured hard work would do it. Yeah. And I would paint and paint and paint. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of reaching out to people that knew how to do it already and learn from them. Right, and, and, and to understand their technique. Yeah. But it sounds like over the years, you said like, uh, you, you think a little bit outside the box. And I think that's how art evolves in a way, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's not, you're not trying to recreate what somebody else has done, you're trying to a put your own spin on it. Absolutely, I love that approach. Uh, it isn't always found in bonsai circles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Often it's, well, this is what the Japanese do, so I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Well, there are two, two uh, young bonsai artists in America that I'm fairly knowledgeable about who are trying to do things a little bit differently. They're mm -hmm. doing things, quote, the American way. Hmm. They're, they're bringing a little spin on it that's a little different, and I love it. Hmm. Uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's healthy. Mm. It's very healthy. Let's go to your Acer over here. I see this one like sticking way up. Is this something that you would let go, or would you clip that off? I'm just curious. Um, I, well, that, and that, that's a choice I have to make. Yeah. I have to decide what do I want to do about the top here. Right. Um, and I, I will probably take this off and yeah. have a rounded top. Mm -hmm. If I want to have a pointed top, um, um, which is a younger uh, tree, uh, I would um, uh, let, let, it, let it grow and thicken. Mm -hmm. So this will probably go. Mm -hmm. But one of the things we do with these, they're, you know, they're, uh, they're opposite uh, leaved trees, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're one on each side. And when, when your tree is pretty much to the point where it's pretty much where you want it in silhouette and all, mm -hmm. you don't let it get really leggy mm -hmm. out here because it'll send these shoots out. Mm -hmm. We pinch those, those off. Right, and then it promotes the growth off to the side. That, and yeah. right. And we're always looking for growth inside mm -hmm. and to the side so that the, the tree is shaped well. And then what kind of um, cultivar is this? Do you know? Ah, uh, ha, ha. Uh, there are over 250 different, yeah. all right, you know about that. This was a seedling. Interesting. I asked the same yeah. question yeah. of my, I'll tell you about my man in Rochester. Yeah, okay. Um, but I bought it from him, yeah. and it was a stump. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. There were no branches. Yeah. It was a stump. Wow. <laughs> and I've grown it from that. So I've had this about 15, 16 years. Wow. Uh, and it still has a good long way to go. It's gorgeous, though. Yeah. And then does it does it redden up over the fall? It does. Okay. And it then does. does it lose its leaves? That's another thing that people don't seem to understand. Yeah. They think, well, now you've got all these trees. What do you do in the winter? Mm -hmm. You bring them in in the house. These trees are they have to act and be treated just mm -hmm. as if they're in the wild. Right. And I put that in quotes mm -hmm. because they are in little skinny pots, so they go. They have to be dormant. Mm -hmm and they go into an unheated garage. Right, because you're not like mulching them or anything that you would typically do with a tree outside no, to you protect could, them from the winter. Right, now yeah. you, some people do do that. Okay. Um, but there are all kinds of problems with that. You don't want to do it on the south side of the house mm -hmm. because it gets too warm, mm -hmm. can get too warm. You've got um, rodents that will nibble and, and do things. So I bring them in an unheated garage. I try to keep the temperature below 42 Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. above 26 Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I get nervous, yeah. depending on the temperature. Have you lost any, depending on like what, I many? rarely lose a tree okay. in the winter, okay. although uh, I'm bragging a bit here. <laughs> I am. I, I, but, but people lose quite a bit of material in the wintertime because right. things happen. Yeah. And it's a difficult time. You still have to water. You just don't water as often for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's one of the benefits of having something that is small is that you could actually still manage to carry it. 
into the garage. Because when I think of like something like a turkey fig, and mm -hmm. it, they can get really large, and you're growing it, and it's in a massive pot, and you have to have it on a roller or something of that nature. Oh, okay. These seem somewhat manageable to uh, carry. Well, mine are, yeah. uh, but there is no size limit on these. So you, is there, there's no size limit in the sense of like, oh, we want something that's around two to three feet, and if it gets too big, it's not no longer bonsai. Uh, there are some bonsai that, have, uh, that take three men to, to lift. Wow, okay. And it's still a bonsai. Okay, because it's restricted and it's in some type of yep. and, tray or pot. Right, and okay. yeah, and it's trimmed and everything just mm -hmm. like a regular bonsai. Yeah, okay. But they tend to be smallish. Mm -hmm. They tend to be. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I see something that's flowering over here. And right. I think that seems, uh, you know, we should, we should feature it because. Oh, let's pick it up. Yeah, just tell me what to do. Seriously. <laughs> That's right. uh, I, I feel like I want to make it as easy, and I even made the pot. You made the pot? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. So you're a ceramicist as well? No, no. I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, no. Um, and I want to show you a couple pots. I, I really enjoy the pots because the pot yeah. is an integral part. Right. It's part of the art. It's I, part of the I'm art. Like a, I'm like, I'm a planter and saucer and trace knob. Okay. So, well, I got yeah. sh to show you a pot that I've got here. I made some friends with some bonsai ceramic artists. Yeah. But this is an azalea. It's a little past uh, its prime mm -hmm. uh, for flowering. Um, and uh, they're very, the azaleas are bushes, as you know. Mm -hmm. They're not really trees, mm -hmm. but you can make them into little trees. Mm -hmm. and, and since they're flowering, um, people just love them. Mm. They, they really like them. Yeah. And these, and every single one of these, you actually bring in during the winter months? Uh, yes. Okay. How, and, and this last winter was pretty tough. I felt like it was really long. Do, it, is there any is there any downside to keeping them in a little bit longer? Um, well, that's a good question. Um, no, if they haven't started to leaf out and mm -hmm. all. If they start to leaf out, and you know what a plant does when it's in a too dark a space, mm -hmm. you've got long internodes. Long internodes, the, yeah. the leaves maybe are not as deep green yep. and all, mm -hmm. and we're avoiding trying to avoid that. Yeah. So um, it, we try to keep it as cool as we can. Right. Now, what about somebody who's in, um, I guess, an, uh, a climate zone like Florida or whatever? Um, right. Are they working with different plants? That, I exactly. mean, there's no. Exactly. Yeah, because they wouldn't maybe be growing like a little oak or a hornbeam from here because it would need a cold period. Exactly. It would need to be putting it into like. And, and this, a refrigerator is, or something. this is always one of the problems <laughs> yeah. for bonsai artists wanting to buy a tree that they're not necessarily familiar with. Right. Oh, where does this grow? And can I grow it where mm -hmm. I live? Mm -hmm. The larch that I showed you. Um, if you want to move to Washington, D.C., don't take your larch. Mm. They won't make it a mm -hmm. couple of years and they're dead. Mm. Very good, so, very good tips. Yeah. You know, so to be. Yeah. To be honest with yourself and kind of where you are and what your climate yeah. zone is and to make certain that that, if you, if you can't plant that plant outside in your environment, then you probably can't plant it as a bonsai. Oh, that's a good, yeah. I've never thought of yeah. it that way. Yeah. That's a good way to think of yeah. it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. And then also from, from that perspective, um, is there any, is there any bonsai that you could actually grow indoors strictly? Oh, sure. Okay. Oh, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And so uh, you're just recreating, like, if I think about houseplants, I think that they're usually from the subtropical and tropical environments because they're managing to be in, like, that 70, okay. 65, well, 70 degree temperature. Me, I have very few tropicals. Yeah. They don't turn me on. Yeah. Uh, which is okay because <laughs> a lot of people like them. Yeah. But let me show you my tropical. Okay. You're going to like it. Okay. And it does, it, it, I bring it in in, this, in the winter for obvious reasons. Right. This is Ficus natalensis, the yes. natal fig. This is the one that I feel like is the most popular for growing indoors. Oh, really? Yes. It, okay. It, yes. I have one that has two stems that kind of have here in a little thing, so it looks like a little dinghy with like two, two okay. legs. <laughs> well, I want to tell you how this was created. I did not create this. Okay. But I met a man mm -hmm. uh, that did, and I was, I was floored. What he did was he took small little saplings, mm -hmm. cuttings actually, mm -hmm. 
He wrapped them together tightly, mm -hmm. got them to root, and the tree fused. Fused. They're all fused. Wow. That's so, cool. What's cool about it is I've got a small little tree with a nice big fat trunk, which yeah. is really hard to accomplish. That is a very neat story. Yeah. Did he like slice the sides of them? To nope. No. You so just tightly put them together wow. and they fuse. So this was one or two, maybe even three uh, little saplings. Mm -hmm. Here's. Here was one or two more, and of course the rest of them went all yeah. up, and you have to just kind of arrange it hmm. and with wiring and, and all. Well, I'm also noticing these uh, tags in here with numbers. Do you have that, like yes. with your information? So you go in a spreadsheet and you're like, okay, 48, this is the last time I pruned the roots, this is what the species is, yes, this is where I got it from. That's it. That's amazing, you're uh, so nerdy, I love uh, it. <laughs> well, yes, a man with fact, a spreadsheet. <laughs> uh, well, I do it. I do it hard copy. Yeah, you know, I'm of that age. <laughs> but uh, we That's just the did, analog version. We just did a workshop up in Rochester. Yeah. I'm, I'm a part of the club up there. Yeah. And so we did a workshop on spreadsheets for your bonsai. Yeah. It's so important to know what you've done. You forget. Yeah. And Especially when you start to collect a lot. Let's yeah, be honest, John. Right. <laughs> if I only had four or five trees, it would not be an issue. <laughs> So, so yeah, the, they're all numbered. Yeah. And uh, I thought they were prices for a minute there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One could hope he would never sell that for forty-eight dollars. Well, I paid uh, I paid around two hundred dollars for that, and <laughs> that amazing. was that was five or six years ago. Yeah, that's crazy. So, uh, they can be extremely expensive. Yes. Depending. Yeah, it's an expensive hobby, but it keeps you young and healthy and and, and excited. I could tell that you are so excited. I <laughs> am passionate about it. I, I truly am. Uh, and there's so much to learn. It's, yeah. it's mind boggling. And I've learned so much about plants. Uh, I never knew plants needed oxygen. The roots mm. needed oxygen. Mm. Mm. I knew they gave off oxygen. Right. They don't need oxygen, do they? Yeah. You know, that was something I learned. I yeah. learned about mycorrhizae. Yeah. Uh, and all these things, and it's fabulous. Actually, that's an interesting an interesting subject because um, I see some of your potting medium here. It, you have some of this uh, oh, rocky yeah. kind yes, of turf yes, stuff. Yes, yes. Look, at you have. I think you have a curly dock in here. Is this yep. a curly dock? That's a, yeah. So cute. Yeah. He's What's gonna the get curly big. Dock? Well, this, he, this? I don't let him get big. No. That's yeah. just my canary. Yeah. This is another ponderosa. Yes. So anyway, so you potting. There's your in soil. Here. That's interesting. So this is going to be very airy and it's super lightweight. It's probably puffed. It's probably like hot. Uh, the the pump. There's pumice, yeah. lava, a little bit of. There's not much akadama in this one. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with akadama? No, I'm not familiar with akadama. It's a clay-like soil that's collected in Japan. Okay. And it's. Um, it holds water really well. Mm -hmm. It doesn't break down quickly, and mm -hmm. we often mix it in with with our soils. Okay. But since we need oxygen for the plants, and they're in a pot often years, mm -hmm. um, you put them in. You can't put them in regular soil. Yeah. Uh, it compacts. Right. And it's not good for them. Right. Um, so then, are you watering often <laughs> because it's so airy? I water this time of year. Yeah. I water daily. Wow. And when we water. We flood the plants. Mm. We don't water the plants. Mm -hmm. We flood them. Mm. The water runs right through. Mm -hmm. The uh, pumice and the lava and whatever absorbs as much as it can right. and then releases it to the roots. I think that's probably why you see a lot of bonsai pots that have large holes on the bottom because uh -huh. you always ha constantly have to right. flood them. Drainage to get them is yeah. crucial. Yep. Yep. You don't put these into pots without drainage. Yep. That's deadly. Yep. Deadly. Amazing, and then also this is a good reason to keep your many of your bonsai outside, or at least if you're watering them and you have one that's indoors, water it outside if you're going to be flooding them, or in, right. a, in a sink where yeah. the water could flood yeah. out because otherwise you're going to be ruining your furniture on the inside. I guess you probably don't care as much about your deck out here because well, it's designed <laughs> it's to, ab that. to absor absorb yeah. all that. Yeah, and then so what other special ones do you have here that you would like to show us? Okay. Um, I'm sure they're all special, but you have to be selective. Yes. Well, uh, let me let me show you this one. Okay. And I want to show you this one too. Okay. Uh, just because it's, but this is a blue spruce. Wow. 
I have to say, our blue spruce in our landscape are having a Doesn't. lot of problems oh. because of the fungal fungal blights the on the leaves. Blue spruce is too. Yeah, blue spruce. Yeah, I knew all that of the... our blue spruce. Oh. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta. Well, I can I can address this. Put a That's another over. nice thing about yeah. having a tree in a pot like mm -hmm. this. You can't address it with fungicides. Right. Whether it'll work or not. Yeah. But I I really like this. See, here's a little on the funky side. Mm -hmm. This is not a typical bonsai. Mm -hmm. Um, and this was collected in the Rockies by a friend of mine, another friend. And, and are they collected as seedlings? Like just no. little seedlings? No, 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 no. No, this was collected. It looked like this. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Except it didn't, the branches weren't, it was just, it was, quote, ugly. Yeah. By, by bonsai <laughs> standards. Um, and that's why I liked it, because of the dead wood. Now, this is an old yeah. tree. Yeah. And it was growing in a, in a valley. He won't tell anyone where it is. Well, that's okay. Growing in a valley <laughs> um, with, um, on top of a lot of rocks, a very, very rocky, it mm -hmm. might have been a big, huge creek bed at mm -hmm. one time. Uh, every winter, and there's water flowing underneath, every winter uh, that water all freezes mm. and it would cut the roots off, mm. damage all the roots. So it would bonsai it so automatically, every naturally. Year, the tree had to send out new roots and right. it stunted the growth. And so he collected this. And you can see um, that it's just now putting out the new growth. And I'm going to have to, if, to keep it short, mm -hmm. I have a, a way that I have to address this. Are you, do you clip half, I'm halfway? Gonna show you, I'm okay. going to show you okay. right here. Let me, I'm going to have to put it down yes. to, to do that. Yep. Can I, let me do it right over here, if I may, sure. Sonder. Yeah. These will grow way out. Mm -hmm. So for one thing, there are three buds right mm -hmm. at the end here. Uh, if we allow all three to grow, with some exceptions, um, it gets we get a fat knob here, and that's not going to be good. And what we're trying to get is bifurcation. Mm -hmm. We want want it to spread uh, two. So I will take this whole bud off. Okay, and that's down to two. Right. Then. Also, what I don't want, some of these, they're still just oh, here, up here. Yeah. Some of these are just a little small, but I don't want this to grow out a lot longer. Yeah. So how do I keep it short? I hold the back of it. Mm -hmm. Just pinch the tops. Yep. Pull the, the, uh, the so center like out. Half of it, yeah. 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 And it'll still grow, it'll but still it won't grow, grow it's held. as much. And next year, I'll get two here. What you do with ponderosa, since they have such long needles, mm -hmm. the thought is what you do is you'll just let it let it grow. It's going to be too long for initially, mm -hmm. year after year. Mm -hmm. But with all this extra growth, you're going to get more back budding. Mm. We're always talking about back budding, mm -hmm. back in here. Mm. And which, then not, you, which not all species will back bud, correct. right? Correct. Yeah. That's correct. So, yeah. so what species are not back butters, I guess? <laughs> uh, in the conifer family, in the co conifer grouping. Well, they don't back bud on on uh, old wood, right? For the most part, right, right. With some exceptions. Yeah. Uh, some just are better than others, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Okay. But then, then once you start getting the back buds, then you can remove some of the ends. Mm-hmm. If you want it squatter. If you want to, yeah, yeah. pull yeah. things back in. Yeah. Amazing. It's just like an, an ebb and flow. I mean, look at this tiny, like this uh, really yeah, uh, yeah. small one behind you. Is that one of the ones that you made? No. Oh, this is the one that you have a, you have a the, dealer. There's a woman, <laughs> there's a woman in, in Oregon mm -hmm. who just, I just flipped when I saw her work. Mm. Just flipped. It's very expensive. And I write, and I, I was, I'm on the board of American Bonsai Society. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of little jobs I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And one of them is to make sure that But a that lot we... of strings you could pull too. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. Um, uh, it, it helps. There's benefits. <laughs> there is benefit. And um, I, I see to it that our journal, we have a journal. And I have to, lo I look for uh, mm -hmm. artists to, to submit. Mm -hmm. And so I asked Jan, 
Rensselaer. I said, oh, I love your work. Would you write an article mm -hmm. for, about your work mm -hmm. for the magazine? Oh, she says, I'm not a writer. I, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I, I said, I'll tell you what, you get it down on paper and I will edit it. I'll mm -hmm. take care of it, which is what I did. Mm -hmm. And we ended up with a nice, nice article about her work. Mm -hmm. And I got a package in the mail oh. and she sent me this pot. Oh, that is <gasps> just so nice. Oh. And then I love how I just love it. And you're, you're curving yep. this up. Yep. And I found a little tiny tree. It's a, it's a Korean hornbeam mm -hmm. again. And so notice the smaller leaves. Yeah. Is that something that, yeah. 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 And I just, I thought, that's perfect. Yep. So. Beautiful. Got to be really ginger with all this. I mean, all the moving back and forth and everything, season over season, and you get these yeah, precious yeah. trays and planters yeah, things, and ceramics. Things can happen. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. So I noticed you have some up here, and then you have some down there. Are okay. these kind of like your, your pets? Uh, and that's no. the backyard. <laughs> uh, I had some special people coming today. <laughs> and so I thought, I've got to open things up a bit. Yeah, to make okay, it... so before you were, we would have been like this. And... Well, not, that, not quite that bad. <laughs> but those trees are typically up here. Okay, got uh, it, yeah. But then I've got other trees too. Okay, so, cool. Uh, but those, those are, those are uh, not as far along and, and I'm, just doing a little of this and a little of that with those. So you, this, yeah, go ahead. go ahead. No, I was going to say, yeah. I was going to point over oh, here because I, I collected this, this. I collected this tree. Now, I did yeah. collect this one. This is another ponderosa pine. And uh, thank you. Yeah, I think that is. Uh, thank you. I think that is something. That's, that's brand new. Yeah. Oh, I know oh, what those are. Yeah, yeah those, yeah. those yeah. are, um, I want to say, soft flies. Goofy. Yeah, they're caterpillars. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. And they get quite large. Oh, I'm so glad you saw those. I know. I haven't yeah, seen it. I know. I'll, I'll take care of those. Okay. Now, those will not get sprayed. Yeah. I'll pull them off. Yeah. Because well, they're easy enough to pull off. Last... I, I looked at. I was like, that looks like almost like a flower, but then I they're did not all see that. they're yeah. all like little eyes, just like. <laughs> but I did collect this tree, and I collected that tree. Yep. Uh, with a, my friend in um, in uh, South Dakota, and it was fabulous. Oh. We went up in the mountains, and uh, uh, it was it was wonderful. And these these are trees growing uh, in cracks in the rocks. Yeah. And they're they're just not going to make it. Right. They'll they'll grow for years. That tree right there is about 150 years old. Oh wow. Minimum. Wow. And we know that because he did core samples on others about that size. Yeah. So, you know, this tree is probably right in that same ballpark. Now, it, what's interesting is that you have this little other seedling kind of growing. Yeah, that's an aspen. Aspen, that the quaking aspen that just dropped in. That just dropped <laughs> in. I, the quaking I, aspens are like that. But you can see, I love plants, and yeah. I have real trouble sometimes yeah. pulling it out. So I, I kind of like it, though, because sometimes, you know, we have this giant oak tree that is on our land. And well, there's lots of things growing on it. It's become its own little microcosm. So unfortunately, there's a Japanese honeysuckle growing up on it. But interesting. But I like that look. Like I like uh -huh. how there's like little yeah. microcosms kind of growing in and on the yeah. plant too, which is neat. Yeah. Yeah. And then sorry, I, I kind of no, detracted that's all right. you from what? here. Well, this is uh, Engelman spruce. I don't oh, know if you're familiar no, with that. I, I've heard of England oh, they're spruce, huge but I've never out west. seen them. Um, and it's not a very happy s spruce. <laughs> it's um, got some sensitive this is, uh, this is ugly, ugly, yeah, ugly. Yeah, so the browning um, of the leaves. Yeah, and I don't know quite why. Mm. It, it did last year, it did get some scale. Okay. And which I, th that's my worst problem. That's what scale I- Scale is tough. I fight how, scale. How do you deal with scale? Uh, do you use some kind of like horticultural oils and you just I've kind tried of that, try I've tried soap. Um, it's tough. And yeah, One of the I've, e I've even tried c cleaning some of the needles or, or yeah. leaves. And uh. do you think like humidity, like our humidity, ever, you know, uh, I, sets these plants back at all? Maybe, maybe I don't know because yeah. it would be drier yeah. out west. This would be dry. Same yep. with the ponderosas. Yep. Uh, uh, a friend of mine gave me some systemic. Uh, stuff that I have been putting on and mm -hmm. I dislike using that's, pesticides. Yeah, I that's always it. like my last, last but, resort, yeah. But, yeah, I love the, the ferns. They just, they just come up like 
gangbusters. This, and these are sensitive ferns, I think, right? That's, that's correct. That's so, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. And they, now they, I think, look really nice. Yeah. Uh, I try to keep the fronds uh, a little on the small side mm -hmm. so that the uh, proportions. But I like this. It had movement, and uh, um, so I've been working with that. Well, it's it's definitely a process. You're showing it. It's a process, and oh, you get you know it's, it's very much so. Do you ever take photos yeah. year over year to yes, see how it's progressed? I do. I do. Yeah. And for some of these, I've got photos when I first got them. Yeah. And you compare it to the way they are now, and yeah. you think, how did they get <laughs> here from there? That's really helpful, though, yeah. if you show the process yeah. of it all and yeah. just how it kind of. Here's moves another Engelman. Oh, and now that this, one, this that is, looks this, better. You doesn't know? that look a lot better? Yeah. Um, now that is a literati. Are you familiar with that term? Literati. Um, not in not in botanical okay. terms. Okay. Um, the literati were the learned people mm -hmm. of uh, of China, mm -hmm. and they would sit around. They were wealthy apparently, but they would sit around and philosophize. Well, and I know do that artwork. Right, and, literati. I know from that term, but I didn't okay. know if is it is it a, it's not it, a botanical term. Or is it being? It's a, it's a, well, maybe it's a bonsai term. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's all I. That's okay. how I learned. Yeah. When it. I think about literati, I think of like what you're saying, like the learned, the okay. philosophizing. Okay. That's how it. The, that's how it doing... got started. But they okay. would paint trees to look, look a certain way. And this, this tree now is, maybe not a good example mm -hmm. of it, but. Um, that would be considered a literati. Mm -hmm. uh, movement in the trunk. Not a lot of leaves mm -hmm. and branches. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it minimal. Less is more. Mm. That's that's something really big in 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 uh, bonsai. Mm -hmm. Less is more. Mm -hmm. But I I fell in love with this, and it it didn't look like this when I got it. I've only had it a few years, mm -hmm. and you can see I'm holding this branch down. That's ugly, mm -hmm. but until this branch uh, really sets. Um, I have to I have to do something to keep yeah. it down. Yeah. And are you ever fertilizing these trees? Absolutely. At all? Okay. And how uh, often? Uh, that is the question everybody in bonsai is wondering. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the younger trees that were where we're just getting things started, um, you fertilize them fairly often. But that promotes, as you well know, can promote excessive, excessive growth. Excessive growth, yeah. And also, depending, if you're mm -hmm. trying to get growth out of it, fine. Mm -hmm. As the trees get more and more mature, we um, pull back on our fertilization. Do you do slow release, or do you do something that's like, you know, because if I'm imagining if you're going more organic versus like a liquid synthetic, I, you're gonna. I prefer the uh, the organic, mm -hmm. and I make my own mm -hmm. a little recipe that I have. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also do use the chemical mm -hmm. fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Some of the people do use the slow release. I heard a horror story of the slow release, in that the people were using it. They um, had a very cold spring, and the release, it doesn't release unless it's fairly warm, the, mm. the, the little pellets. Mm. Warm weather a, a hit, sort of like now, and it released more of the material than it really would normally. Early, really early on. And killed many of their yeah, plants. right. So I don't use it anymore. Okay. Now, here's one that's catching my eye, because you have two in one kind of growing here. Yeah. Was that something that just happened again? Yeah. It was a little seedling. Yeah, I was going to move a it. White when, pine, maybe. It, it, very good. Yeah, very good. Maybe it is it's a white. Not, is it? Yeah. Well, yep. Oh, it yep. is. Very you know your leaves. plants. No, sometimes I'm I do, so but impressed. sometimes I don't. Well, no, <laughs> I'm so impressed. Really, you, you're really good. Um, uh, when this is I, a great example of some of the. You no, know, those are candles. Candles, yeah. Right, and when you break them off, oh, I had a friend of mine. What we were talking about, he's learning. Mm -hmm. And he broke them all off way down here where there are no needles. Right. And so there were no needles. And <laughs> so that, just, that, that doesn't work. Yeah. What You've happened? got a, uh, the, um, there Abort are, mission. <laughs> there's a bare area and then the needles start to come out. Yeah. Oh, I see. So when you break it off, you've got to break it off in the needle area. So there's some needles are left on the tree. Mm -hmm. 
Anyway, this is another balsam fir, mm -hmm. as you, I'm mm -hmm. sure, know. But I just, I fell in love with this. Yeah, that's oh, gorgeous. Oh, yeah. I just love that. It's I don't, so craggy. I don't and... like this. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, what would you do with it? Can you just, you just have to leave it, or would you um, eventually I, try a, to clip it? <laughs> it's a major, major uh, branch, yeah. uh, root part. Yeah. So what I really could do, if I could turn it down a little bit more uh -huh. and get it under the, uh, the soil level, maybe right. that would help. Right. Wouldn't be so obvious. Yeah. But I've only had this a couple of years. But I'm not pushing with fertilizer. I, I don't push much. But since, back to the fertilizer, since we're watering so heavily mm -hmm. and the water rushes right through, mm -hmm. it pulls n the nutrients out right, and the more, fertilizer out more quickly. More so quickly, you got to yeah. always keep that in mind. Right. Also, one of the um, men in our group um, is a horticulturist from Cornell. Mm -hmm. And he got talking about using biochar. Are mm. you, 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 yeah, like terra preta. Yeah. And yeah. that's a big deal now, yeah. apparently. Yeah. And so now several of the bonsai people I know, the professional ones, mm -hmm. are incorporating biochar, hmm. uh, charcoal, because that holds not only moisture, but holds uh, organic material. Yeah, because it and has the all nutrients. these, like, it's a, almost like a tufa, you know, it has yep. all these crags and stuff yep. that hold it all and is, exactly. is porous, but still can maintain, all, has all that surface area for all the yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, when when are you going to leave the I'll white take pine it, in I'm there? Go, no, are you going to take no, it out? No, I think I will take it out. Okay. Um, w once, uh, once I repot it, um, I'll, I'll take it out. Maybe I'll do a little something with it. The white, our American white pine doesn't do well as hmm. a bonsai. Hmm. It's leggy and it just doesn't do well. Well, when I think about it in the forest. Oh, they're beautiful. They, they, I love they, them. They like to go straight up. Yeah. You know, they yeah. like to shoot straight up. Yeah. And if they're lucky, they'll, they'll be as straight as an arrow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think of also like junipers and, you know, I feel like that's a very popular one. I don't see... I have, Any here. I have very few junipers. Yeah. I don't particularly like them. Why don't you like them? Because they are a popular <sighs> uh, plant for a bonsai. It's a very good question. Mm -hmm. Maybe because I've had, didn't have much luck with them when I hmm. started. Okay. I, I do have some. Okay. I um, thought maybe they'd be too, they're, they're too pedestrian. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, not at all. Yeah. It's just that uh, I, they're very popular. Mm hmm and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, you don't have to have an explanation you, right. for everything. Right, well you have preferences for plants <laughs> yes, too, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. I love this one. Absolutely. Oh, I don't care for those. Well, what is your favorite that you grow from a coniferous standpoint and also from a deciduous standpoint? There we go. Um, I, I like the larches mm -hmm. and I like the ponderosa pines mm -hmm. because they have such interesting uh, twists and turns. The ponderosas are just outstanding, in right. my opinion. Right. Um, on when I got started, I was interested in deciduous, mm -hmm. not conifers. Mm. I don't. The conifers just didn't turn me on. Mm -hmm. Over the years, more and more, I got mostly conifers now. Yeah. Those yeah. Are well, the ones I, I like. think it's so funny how we like transition and yeah. come over to, you know, because when we when we first came onto our land, I could see that he had this preference for. The Acers, the Acer palmatums, and like he brought in a lot of, you know, Korean, Japanese, um, Himalayan species of conifers, so non-natives. And I'm kind of like, oh no, native all the time. I'm native all the way, right? But I'm now seeing the beauty of them in the landscape and how you can manipulate them to be an interesting artistic living sculpture within the landscape. And so yeah. I'm coming over to it okay. and learning as You're I go. You're evolving. Yeah, I'm evolving and it gives me something new to learn, which is really wonderful. And yeah. so I was eager to come here because when I look at this kind of stuff, I was like, I could create that in the landscape with what he has. Absolutely. And it's been growing for decades. So, you know, you get the beauty of the older bark and and it's not just something that I like plunked in the landscape like yesterday. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I, see, I see the value. I in call it, it character. Character, and the and, and that's that's what um, creates an interesting life. That's what creates the story yeah. around it. Yeah. And every one of these trees has got a story with it. Every yeah. single one of them. Yeah. Some of the stories are a lot more fun than others, but <laughs> but uh, this one here, this yeah. is another balsam. 
um, I lifted this off of a, a boulder in yeah. the Adirondacks. And I'm making a, a semi-cascade. This so reminds me of, in a way, our hemlocks. And I'm wondering, can a hemlock be a good Arnie Suga? Okay, there it is. They, okay. are, they are not easy to work with. If okay. you go out in the woods and you say, I'm going to go collect one, they're all right. over. They're, they, they just don't have much interest right. uh, um, this one's for collecting. Seem, this one seems a little yellow, a little It, it is a little yellow, okay. and I don't know what the problem is okay. here. Um, it's like I'm being too restricted. <laughs> no, I don't think that's it. <laughs> Uh, it was in bad shape when it was given to oh, me. Oh my goodness, but you have like some liverworts and stuff yeah, right there, right? Yeah, right? That's Liver cool. We, I, I like it, but it means things are a little on the wet side. On the wet side, okay. But but usually hemlock, but they, hemlock you find them in the bottomlands. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. So that's why it, it hasn't bothered me. I made yeah. that pot. Yeah. Oh wow, that's nice. That's yeah. very precise of a pot to yeah. make. I made it in a workshop. Is it like a so sculpture? I, like is it a mold, I mean? or Yeah, is it, well he brought he brought the strips Okay. And we had to put them all together. Got it. To make the pot. Yeah. And then we had to choose our glaze. Okay. I like the natural, the natural kind of, I don't like anything too glazy. This one, okay. this one really speaks to me. This, this type of planter. That's I concrete. Love. Is it concrete? That's concrete. I love it. Yeah, it's I do beautiful. too. In fact, we're talking about doing that in I, a workshop at the, we have a local club that yeah. I kind of spearhead. I, I love the um, organic shapes yeah. of, of, of those. Okay. Oh, and let me show you another, if I'm going too yeah. fast. No, we've, no, By the way, we've got water in there too, guys. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll date break nut bread. So Oh, date nut bread. I don't we'll want... hit that afterwards. Look at the little tickety. How long is the tickety? Oh, oh there, yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's get them too yeah. close. He's like, I don't want to be on camera. <laughs> yeah. This is um, an Ooh. eastern um, white, uh, eastern. See. It's Thuya occidentalis. Okay. Uh, it's a. Uh, a lot of why? things are called cedars. Oh, that term that, is terrible. That, it's like just a generic term for like probably six uh, genera. Eastern white cedar. Yeah, yeah I'm saying yeah, it yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not a. It's a thuya. Yeah. Uh, Which actually work really well in our landscape, and we have a lot of thuyas planted all over the landscape. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is exquisite. It looks like a wind swept. Yep you know, on top of a high altitude yeah. mountain. This will probably go in the national show and I'm gonna tell you about the national show. Okay. Cause I think you will be turned on there. Yeah, I love uh, being turned on by plants. Okay, okay <laughs> good. Um, and this pot is by a, a very well-known woman, Sarah Rayner okay. in Minnesota. I've got several of her pots. Um, really like her material. Mm. She's, she's really super. Uh, anyway, uh, this, I picked this, this was a little tiny tree in 1986. I picked it out of a river in the Adirondacks, floating down the river, it had fallen out of the bank. Wow. It was floating down the river. I picked it up, brought it home, planted it at my pond, and for years, the deer nibbled it and everything. It didn't do anything. Yeah. That was before I got into bonsai. Yeah. I got into bonsai and it, just a little light bulb went on. John. Why don't you try to do something with that? And so I did. And so this is what I came up with. That is exquisite. It's a really exquisite piece. And the the bark and everything yeah. and now this is a full cascade Ugh. because most of the tree yeah. is below the, the edge of the yeah. pot. Gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. And it'll be my first tree in the national show. And so it, do you get uh, do people vote at the national show? Is it like a, um, where you get like ribbons or medals? Yes. Okay. They bring in they bring in three judges. Mm -hmm. There'll be one from Japan, one from the UK, and I think one from either Mexico or Canada. Okay. I'm not sure. And then what are the criteria for the show? Oh, oh, they have a whole list. Okay. They'll look at the rootage. Yeah. They'll look at the pot. They'll look at the color of the tree, the health of the tree. Mm -hmm. They'll look at the ramification, um, all of these things, and uh, give it a number. Uh -huh. And then at the end of the day, they put it all together and come up with the best conifer, the best deciduous, the best uh, native uh, species. Mm. It, it's a big, big deal. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And what took you so long to, to actually submit? Uh, my trees are not that great. <laughs> I'm being honest. Yeah. I'm totally yeah, honest. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, 
this is an, I, 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 sh I have to look up what the species is. I thought it was a winged elm. It's an elm. Mm -hmm. I and thought it was a winged elm, mm -hmm. but it's not. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it's, there's a, a an, I got it in Oklahoma. Hmm. Um, I dug it. It took me two and a half hours, literally, because I timed it. Two and a half hours to get this little baby out of the ground. And how big was it before? Uh, well, it had branches and stuff okay. up in here. Okay. But it was in a cow chomped field. Wow, look at the thickness of yeah. this trunk. And uh, it yeah, looks like an elephant. The soil foot. was way up to here. Oh, wow, so it was be buried. Yeah. Yeah, and it was probably like being suffocated. But the, it was a field um, of cow patty. Uh, of cows. <laughs> yeah. And they nibbled it every year. Wow. So they, they did the bonsai <laughs> they were work doing the bonsai. in a sense. Yeah. But they were they were literally piling up their cow poop and like well they may have <laughs> and there were all these rocks in the field yeah. so you 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 couldn't take a shovel and typically and to dig it out yeah well it looks exquisite it looks like an I like elephant's it. foot yeah it's amazing I, I really like it yeah well, so I'm happy with it I think this is I think this is a wonderful tour is there any last one that you want to show us. I mean, I mean, I know you want to show us everything, but no, no, you can't look at everything. <laughs> um, that might have a story with it. Well, yeah, yeah, because I think this people will be able to relate to this. Oh, maybe this is a, a, a little. Um, is this a little plum? Cotoneaster. Cotoneaster. Okay, no, I don't know that one. Ah, okay. Um, this you can. People put these around their their homes. Okay. Uh, it, it's a nursery. Nurseries carry these. Somebody was digging this up and throwing it out, and I said, "Oh no, no! <laughs> I, I can do something with that." <laughs> now again, it 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 didn't look quite like this. Yeah. But I made it into a little uh, a cascade. And then, and that was you probably worked with a wire yes. to kind of you know pull it down. Right. And, okay. And I did this, I've only had this two years now. Yeah. This is oh, a wow. second growing season. Wow. So the idea being, everyone thinks, well, it takes 20, 30 years to have any kind of a tree. No, right. you can have things mm -hmm. very quickly. And of course it's flowering, which is nice. We're just about finished with that. Yeah, so inspirational. Well, you really gave us a lot of food for thought here and you really allowed me to see kind of what I want to do in miniature, but like in in my landscape as well. So even mm -hmm. if I don't get into, I think my avenue into bonsais are going to be through my actual landscape trees. Sure. And then moving from that that point forward, mm -hmm. um, I already sense my, I already feel my spidey senses are, are senses are telling me that I'm going to move that direction. Just because I'm also getting books on it now, <laughs> too. Uh. Whenever whenever I get the books, yeah, I know I'm going. I'm starting to get go deep. So, well, this is just incredible, John. Thank you so much for sharing your passion with us. Now, if you visited any of my sites, including homesteadbrooklyn.com, houseplantmasterclass.com, summerrain.net, or even our newest site at flockfingerlakes.com, then you'll know the slick design and the easy to use interfaces are complements of Squarespace. Now, the first thing you'll notice about them is that they just have really nice modern design templates. And there's quite a selection to choose from. And I've even used different templates for all of my sites just to give them a different look. And you can easily customize them to make it even more different if you want. Plus, Squarespace is this all-in-one platform. So they have these easy integrations and they could offer solutions for everything from your social integrations to email marketing to setting up your shops online, which I use for both homesteadbrooklyn.com and flockfingerlakes.com. If you have any questions whatsoever, they have some of the best customer support as well. So I encourage you to give them a try, especially if you're looking to build your own website or upgrade a pre-existing one. You could just use my link, squarespace.com slash summerrain for 10% off your purchase.